Welcome back to the book of Exodus. We are all the way in chapter 12. This is one of the most pivotal chapters in the book. And now we're getting the different instructions that especially relate to the Passover. So let's look today at verses 5 and 6. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. So first of all here, we're now we're in some qualifications. The, the offering must be unblemished. You can't bring one that's, that's messed up in any way. It's got to be unblemished. After all, I mean, this is a sacrifice that's being offered to a holy God. So, of course, it has to be unblemished. Now, this is going to mean ultimately that Jesus, the true lamb, the true sacrifice, he will die in your place and mine, having never sinned. His sacrifice will have to be flawless. Therefore, his life will need to be flawless. Jesus is going to have to live his entire life without sinning. Now, the animal selected for sacrifice is picked out on the 10th day, and then he's going to be sacrificed on the 14th day. Well, it's not really described why on the 10th day, but that's just the instruction that's given. It's quite precise. We do know this, that this is going to be a very careful preparation. Uh, this won't be a last-minute thing where you're rushed to it and at the last moment you do it. No, this is very measured. That's all worked out very very carefully ahead of time. I think God wants us sometimes to, to slow down, bring down the speed a little bit. Let's get down, so let's slow down a little bit and put some focus in this. Now, did you notice also this uh, statement we read? The whole congregation is to kill their sacrifice at the, the same time. And each family unit has its sacrifice, remember yesterday morning, um, and yet they're all going to, at, at about the very same time, on the 14th day of that month, they're at a twilight, they, at that very time, all these animals are going to be sacrificed at that time. They're going to kill it at the same hour, more or less, on the same day. They're going to take the blood and apply it on the doorposts, and they're going to take the sacrifice. They're going to cook it and so on. All, all that, everything's happening that, that very day, that very night. And it's all going to be done before the death angel comes around at about midnight. So the judgment's kind of at the same hour. Deliverance comes there, again, we might say, at the same hour. The event of divine intervention and deliverance is all going to happen for this group all at about the same time. They are going to experience it together as a group. You and I, we live in a very individualistic age uh, where we kind of do things all off in corners, separate from everybody, but this is a communal event. This is going to affect everybody at the same time, the same place, and send them all moving in the same direction. When God passes over the firstborn, this is going to mark the, the deliverance of all the Hebrews firstborn from death by the God of heaven. God is giving life to them all, every family in the community at the same time. Life for the firstborn. Stewart in his commentary has this to say about the sacrifice. I just thought it was so good, I want to repeat it. Quote, the reason for demanding perfection rested not in the quality of the meal, but in the symbolic purpose. The animal served as a reminder of the eventual deliverance that a perfect God perfectly provided for his people as part of the process of making them holy like himself. Proper relating to God requires perfection. So just a pretty interesting line there from uh, Douglas Stewart. Uh, not the same church as I belong to, but a pretty strong point looking at the line here. Jesus, our sacrifice, has to be perfect. And guess what? He is. May his perfections guard you till tomorrow morning.